Dead games can be some of the most fascinating corners of the internet, and I've played my fair share of them, meeting some of the nicest people from all over the world on the way. Alright, I need to not die straight away, otherwise I've... it's kind of pointless what he just did. Look at us. Just building houses with just two of us on the entire game. Today we'll explore eight more dead games ranging from free to $200 that all have one thing in common, a small community somehow keeping it afloat. Altitude is a cartoony fighter jet shooter released in 2009, with over 1,800 reviews on Steam. Between 2009 and 2012, Altitude had a pretty healthy player base, with a high of 4,900 players over 14 years ago. In 2014, with the goal of getting more traffic, Altitude went free to play and then everything went silent until 2021. A dev blog released in 2021 detailing a decently sized update, and ever since then the game receives the occasional patch, but nothing too significant. I looked at the Steam charts and the only time people were online was at night, from 12am to roughly 2am my time, which meant I was going to have to stay up late in order to meet the community. Thankfully, I'm a degenerate YouTuber, so I hopped on the moment I saw the online player count reach 5 and attempted to join their server. It turns out that to join a ranked match with these fellas, I had to be level 12, or at least that's what the server said. To join this server, you must know its secret code. Okay, I'm gonna get in this server. You must be level 12 or higher, you are level 4. I guess we- yep, we're just gonna play single player. About two hours later, I finally reached level 8, and decided I'd come back the next day to try again. Brother. I better not do that in the real game. And then, after a further 30 minutes or so, I finally reached level 12. You must be at least level 40 to play ranked. Now, apparently to join the server, all you have to be is level 12. But to actually play and spawn in, the requirement is level 40, which meant I wasn't going to be able to join in. These guys are just casually playing while typing in chat. That is sickening. I had sweat dripping down my forehead and I was playing against beginner bots. Most people still in the community of 2000 plus hours. I gotta ask. It has to be like almost a decade ago, right? 2011, 2009, 2009. <laughs> There were quite a few people online at the time, so I spent a while talking to them and asking them various questions about Altitude. I found it pretty f***ing awesome that these guys come together almost every single night to keep this game alive. About 20 minutes passed of me watching these fellows pull off moves I had no idea even existed, and then one of them asked the admin to change the server from ranked to unranked, which would allow me to join in. They changed it so I can play. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, I just got my first kill. They told me seeing new players is pretty rare, and most of them are old players revisiting the game that was a big part of their childhood. But as a level 12 with no clue about the game, I, I think I did alright. Okay, come on, let's play seriously. Play seriously. No. 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 <laughs> this is so sweet, man. They're just letting me play with them for no reason. We played two games before it was switched back to ranked, and in the second game my teammates were trying their best to try get me a goal. Look at that pass! Are you f kidding me? I am stuck, but look at that pass. Okay, <laughs> f legends, man. All of them. Alright, I am a... Uh... That's it for me. Everyone online was a genuine legend, and I didn't expect for a second that they'd actually let me play. But that's what these communities are like. If you're an old Altitude player and had no idea things were still running, I'll link the Discord they use down below. They queue up ranked matches pretty much every night, and the lobby sometimes reached 20 odd players. Even against bots that were slapping me about, Altitude was genuinely a lot of fun. And more than anything, I was just left confused as to why this game doesn't have a more active player base.
Some of my favorite games to revisit are those from the early Xbox 360 days, like Castle Miner Z, Castle Crashers, or Murder Miners. Have you ever wanted to have a more creative experience in Halo, or a more intense experience in Minecraft? Well, the developer JForce just released a new game to the Xbox Live Marketplace, Murder Miners. Hey, this is Ty with JForce Games. Man, thanks a lot for joining our friends list. I'll be sure to let you know next time we update the game. Take care. I started off by creating a character, then joined the only server online with one other fella. This world was just purely flat. No zombies, no guns, just a flat world with a guy called PancakeLover72 on the other side of the map. Oh! Oh shit, you can actually build stuff. Oh, there they are. PancakeLover72. Oh, he said, yo. Hey. I'm assuming they know everything about the game. I used to play this hella back in the day. Oh, an Xbox 360. That's f***ing cool. It turns out that this guy used to play Murder Miners back on the Xbox 360, and I just happened to catch him revisiting the game a few years later. So like 2015, 2013. That's like almost 10 years ago. It took me a while to get used to the controls, but Pancake and I started building our own houses. Phil was disabled in free mode oh, okay oh that's cool like fill in the whole wall pancake built a quaint little house while i put together a lump of blocks that ended up looking a bit like a church look at us just building houses with just two of us on the entire game you got a spongebob house there we go it's coming together a little bit i mean not really but yeah and now we uh and now we preach Amen. There's no f***ing way we just did that at the same time. It was about 6pm when I initially hopped on, and after an hour or so, nobody else had joined. Usually, it's not until about 1 or 2am when people actually start hopping on, and sometimes the player counts can reach the high 20s. So, I decided to let Pancake know that I was gonna go, and then come back later when more people were online. Alright, I'ma be back on later tonight, you know few hours yeah bro i'm gonna take my leave and then come back later when there's uh some more people love you too this video is sponsored by the legends over at war thunder the most extensive vehicle combat game in the world it doesn't matter what type of player you are either because one of my favorite things about war thunder is that there's a game mode for everyone arcade with fast paced matches simulator mode or realistic mode which is the perfect middle ground Alongside the realistic graphics and audio design, War Thunder also has over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships for you to get stuck into, ranging from armored cars of the 1920s to the main battle tanks of today. You also don't need any extra hardware to get started with War Thunder. All you need is your mouse and keyboard or a controller, and you can join over 70 million players from all over the world exploring the high quality content this game has to offer. Play War Thunder for free today on PC or console using my link below. And if you're a new player or returning after six months, you can also get yourself a massive limited time bonus pack, including multiple premium vehicles and an exclusive vehicle decorator. Four hours later, I returned and joined a PvP lobby with seven other people. I discovered that I wasn't very good at PvP here, and that, much like Sector's Edge, these maps were entirely destructible. The game ended a few minutes later once I had gotten one kill. A little no scope, I can feel it coming. Hold on. Oh. Okay, the sniper is not for me. And afterwards, the server we were playing on shut down, meaning no other servers were available. I waited a little bit for someone to start one, but nothing happened. Nowadays, the majority of Murder Miners updates are just for events, small patch notes or announcements. And that's probably because of the sequel in the works called Murder Miners X. It isn't officially out yet, but you can access the beta for it in their Discord that'll be in the description. There were so many of you that contacted me about Murder Miners, and the more I dig into the history of it, the more people I find that attribute a lot of their childhood to this game. Caleb, who watches the videos, told me over on Twitter how he remembers using his leftover Christmas gift cards to buy the game for $2 on his Xbox 360, and how he went on to play hundreds of hours on the game. There's probably thousands of people just like him, and even more that don't even know Murder Miners is still a thing. 
There was also one more other thing I wanted to add before we move on though. After watching the 10 year anniversary video and seeing this tribute near the end, I did some research on who the largest dog actually was and found some great stuff that I thought you guys should hear. He was known as the best murder miners map builder by far and created over 35 maps for the community, while also uploading a bunch of videos about them to his own YouTube channel. If you've ever played murder miners then it's pretty likely you played on a map made by the largest dog. But in March of 2021, he passed away, leaving behind all of his incredible creations. Murder Miners Hub made an entire video immortalizing the story of the largest dog, and it'll be linked in the description if you want to watch it yourself. I don't think I've ever seen someone as appreciated and loved by a community in a very long time. And by looking at some of his maps, you could tell this legend was in a league of his own. Just reading the comments on his tribute video is enough to make a grown man cry. And of course, if you personally have any stories of the largest dog, I'd love to hear them in the comments. A while ago, I met a French lad while playing Beyond the Wire, because there were only about 5 people online and for half the match he was just teaching me words in his language. After that video, people from the Beyond the Wire community reached out to me and told me that every Saturday they meet up in a server and revive the game for a few hours. Fast forward a few months, and I thought it was finally time to come along for one, without anybody knowing I'd be there. Oh, hello, Dis hello. the first game was short and ended in a French win while I was heavily contributing. In the second game, more people had started joining, and there were at least 30 of us. Oh shit! Thank you. There's another. That's even what. Okay, you know what? My captain for the second game was Lasla, and with his leadership, we put up a very good fight. Oh, that's my shadow. Oh, shit. Wait, can someone get me? Oh, this f***ing legend. Thank you. Right, I need to not die straight away, otherwise it's kind of pointless what he just did. Apart from a few grenade deaths, I think I did my bit, and served as a part-time medic as always. Eventually though, after 30 minutes of fighting, we somehow held them off and won the game again. Oh, it's Woodward. Oh, he has just walked away from me. Is he coming back? Oh, Woodward. What? He died. GG. By the third game, there must have been over 40 people, and the map switched to Vimy Ridge. This was a map I'd never played before, but it was honestly one of the best looking maps I think I've ever seen. I didn't focus too much on getting kills, and instead just spoke with the guys on my team. It's kind of cool to think that out of all the people on the earth come together and play this game every Saturday. It's kind of cool. Hmm. Yeah, it used to be um, Saturday, Sunday, and Friday, but now we just do it Saturdays. Yeah, I play Postscript too, that game's pretty fun. Yeah, oh, yeah, I love it's called Squad scripting. before now, I believe. Oh yeah, but this game has really, really brought me to PC gaming and watching videos of it. Is this a guy here? Hell yeah. You see this better here, because way too good game to, to just like be forgotten like this. Hey, it looks beautiful. Even the map designs are pretty sick. It is a really good looking game. How long you been playing? I have like 800 hours in this game. I uh, first started playing uh, once it came out in early access, so like back in 2020, I believe. See, just the amount of detail even in the trenches here is just badass, dude. Just sick. Yeah, for real. Like, I started on uh, Verdun. That's really where I got into World War One. Yeah, Verdun's a good game. Yeah, I was in the Marines when I was playing that game. California? <laughs> good times. Hey, well, thank you for saving, good sir. Oh, hey, no problem, no problem. What a man. That's wholesome. One of my teammates, Drodog, turned out to be a vet and spoke about how much he loves the game and why he plays it. I was in artillery, so I like to use the artillery cannon too. Oh damn, you use artillery? Yeah, the M57, Alpha 2. Yeah, I have the occasional uh, ringing in the ear, but nothing crazy. I always use ear protection and cover my ears. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But then I started reading about like micro tears. Uh, a lot of special forces guys have like brain problems because they get micro tears from all the door breaching, like little explosions right there. Sheesh. Yeah, I didn't know about that. So. I just learned about that like, geez, like maybe a month ago, two months ago, and I was like, holy shit. So I just 
Happy every day I wake up. Like literally playing this game is probably like one of my like weekly things I look forward to. There are so many just like Drodog that have kept coming out to these Saturday sessions because without them the game isn't really playable. Unless it's 6pm on a Saturday, there's rarely more than one or two players online. And that turns a lot of people away from these games before they actually get the chance to play them. Holy shit, what's going on? Alright, and then we sit here and we wait. Like, GG. Ah, oh, that was good. The guys behind these weekly sessions are called RAR 73rd, and with the help of a BR1 server, they've been trying their best to revive the game and average 40 to 60 players each week now. They also thought I should mention that in case you want to play the game yourself, it's just $2 on G2A, instead of the $10 it costs on Steam. Everyone I played with on that day were a bunch of legends, and there's something really wholesome about 60 odd people meeting up every week in an online lobby to experience what the game they love used to be like. Tower Unite is a virtual world game created in 2016 with mini-games, arcade, casinos, and a bunch of features you've probably seen in games like VRChat, all for $20. Throughout its life, Tower Unite has maintained roughly the same player count, with occasional spikes but nothing lasting more than a few weeks. I was told that while some of the lobbies have players, anything else is pretty much empty. Oh, here's where everyone is. Like the mini-games. But before I got to that part, I fell into a casino and found some people in there. Damn right. You're a big baller, dog. Got that 9k Dude, on that shit, boy. I just wanted to hit this black 11. What can I say? I think that's good for me. Whoa, 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 whoa. How'd I lose 9,000? A game like this obviously attracts all kinds of characters, and there's really no limit to the type of people you can meet. Oh god, it's mayo. If I lose this, my family starves. I got my toes crossed for you, man. <laughs> it's okay, bro. It's okay. I left my family as collateral oh my on the loan I got to this bet. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm dude. I tried for a good amount of time to jump into a minigames lobby with absolutely anyone. And after a while, I joined one guy in what is basically Mario Kart. Two other people joined right after us, and that made things a little tougher. The guy in the life size to baby car gave me some leeway, but the other two essentially let me lead the entire race until it actually mattered. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh, I'm messing up badly. How am I third? Okay. That, no, 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 no. I got an extra $1,100 for third place and then went straight back to the casino. When stumbling around, I found where some of the player houses are meant to be, but the entire room was empty and almost everyone online just crowded into the casino, arcade, or just the lobby. Even though they aren't as used anymore, player rooms or condos are probably one of the most interesting features of Tower Unite. All right. Well, who else? Where's uh, Dizzy? You almost I'm done? Um, I'm downloading. I'm at 30%, selling at 70 megabytes. On the Reddit, there's several people posting their designs and even their Smooth Dirt builds. Smooth Dirt is a different type of condo you can purchase that gives you a huge open flat world with pretty much full creative freedom. Some of the coolest things I've seen in Tower Unite were in videos of people touring their Smooth Dirt condos, like this town someone made on the Reddit. There's an entire Tower Unite archive dedicated to footage of different people's builds, some of them over four years old that I'll link in the description. A lot of the hype for Tower Unite might be gone for now, but the development is surprisingly still going strong, and by the looks of some of the wording in dev blogs, there could be some big things coming. In 2015, EA released a Battlefield title that was pretty much instantly treated with hate and slowly lost most of its players over the years to the point where the game now rarely peaks above 40 players in the entire world. I joined the only server online near the end of a conquest game where each team fights for control over several flags. I knew going into this that the combat was going to be pretty intuitive and I went on to get a couple kills in the second game and also met someone by the name of T-Row88. T-Row was on my team and was the only guy to respond to me when I said hi, so I started asking him questions about when he started playing and how long he's been there. 
I just asked him how long he's been playing the game. Over 3,500 hours. Oh my days, that's a lot of hours. He told me the reason he never left was because he just liked the game and instantly got stuck with it. Unless I can sneak up on them. Hold on, hold on. Well, that did work. He told me that a big reason Battlefield Hardline failed was its initial release, and how different it was to other Battlefield titles. Yeah, people didn't like that the game is so different compared to the earlier games. All the comments on the Battlefield Hardline trailer from over 8 years ago kind of proves that point. People say things like, unpopular opinion but this game was actually pretty good, and had a very enjoyable multiplayer, and perhaps we treated you too harshly. I've never really gotten far into a Battlefield game in my life, so I couldn't say how different this game is. But it felt really good, and made me think how much better it could have performed if the name Battlefield just wasn't attached. I asked Hero about development and if there's any more updates to come, and he wasn't aware of any. Not that I know of anymore. Interesting. Occasionally the devs return to put on a sale or switch the season, but that's as far as it goes. Near the end of the second game I discovered where the cars were stashed, and spent the last few minutes as the team taxi. <laughs> what? Oh, it's the end. Oh, that was good. That was actually pretty fun. Hardline seemed pretty fun to me, and didn't feel like it should be anywhere near a dead game. So who knows, maybe if Battlefield wasn't in the title, we wouldn't be talking about it today. It took me a good while to find a game with a $70 price tag that wasn't Redfall, and eventually I came across an entire bundle of games called Combat Mission. Each game has its own location and different quirks, but the one I chose was the most highly reviewed one, Combat Mission Shock Force 2. The entire Combat Mission series goes back quite a few years, and you can tell that when you play these games. The whole vibe is pretty old, and the controls are just like what you'd expect. I created my own little game and spawned in this pretty flat world with two different armies. I had the choice to manage both, and usually one player would manage the other side, but since it was just me, I chose one side and the AI controlled the other. To move people, I had to click an icon which would select the whole group, click where I want to move them to, and then select what pace I want them to move at. It's safe to say this took me a while to get things going, and at some point I started watching tutorials on how to actually move the fellas around. Okay, I found a playlist with basics tutorials for the game, and it has over 30 videos, and they're all at least like 8 to 10 minutes long. To combat mission, where we're gonna look at getting around the battlefield on foot. In total, I managed to move probably half my army, and the rest were just left at the spawn. So those two people over there are being shot at and they're probably going to die shortly. These fellas are about to run all the way into the group and then just run all the way back again. Once they get over this little ridge, I should be able to target them to like, here, there you go. That'll work. About 15 minutes in, I thought my guys were well set up, so I left them to it and came back about 25 minutes later to check the damage. Ugh. Right. Are these fellas over here finally dead? Yeah, looks like it. Good job. Target this guy. Get him. Get his ass. Don't let him enter that building. This is like the last final siege. There's a couple people in that pit. I want them gone. Okay, well that was a interesting siege. We lost a couple men. I think more than anything this game confused me because it's not made for my smooth brain. But my guys did get some kills and after the clock ticked down I clicked the ceasefire button to see how we did. Can we have like a ceasefire? Okay, we got 372 men survived. Okay, technically we lost. They just had two fellas that went missing, I don't know how that works. Afterwards, I looked into why this game costs so much, and found an entire subculture of people who dedicate hundreds of hours to the entire series. Usually Hapless is one of the legends in the combat mission community. He's gone through the effort of creating a giant playlist of tutorials purely for the goal of teaching new people about the game. With over 250 minutes of footage, and this barely covers the basics of combat mission. I doubt I'll play Combat Mission again, but everyone who does play has earned my f respect. There's a number of games all over Steam that have very strange prices, 
and Spooky Men is one of them. Let's quickly take a look at the reviews. I want to see what people think. I'm rich. The game does indeed contain Spooky Men. Tread carefully. Okay. When Spooky Men first launched on Steam, it went viral for costing quite a bit. The most expensive game ever put up for sale is a game that you have never heard of. I am almost 100% certain of it. And it is a game that has been played by at least 16 people. And it's a game called Spooky Men. And it retails for $100,000 on Steam. But considering everyone was probably waiting on a sale to buy the game, or Steam finally took action, the price fell down to what it is now, just $200. When I loaded the game up though, I found out that two people are required to start a game. So I stuck around in a lobby waiting for people for about 30 minutes. Something tells me I might be here a while. And I thought about going through the reviews to find somebody, but with only 24 reviews, that was pretty hopeless. Instead, I did what everyone would do, and bought another $200 game, this time called Next Station Zombies. Okay, so the last time somebody played this game was three days ago, and in the last month, there's been a player high of two. I loaded up and jumped into the game, which was like any mobile clicker. You buy guns and upgrades to your truck, and fend off zombies that try catching up to you. Oh, well, we're taking a lot of damage, hold on. Surprisingly, over 40 minutes went by, and I managed to unlock some pretty high-level guns, and then remembered I had about an hour left in the refund window. Wait! Wait! Aha. Uh -huh. We have a slight issue, that is now the only thing I have, so I don't think this is gonna go well, but... Alright, I'm done. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I can't go over the two hours because I, I need to still refund it. I think I'm more impressed that 10 other people decided to actually buy this game than I was with the mechanics of the game. What's even more strange though is that the creators of Next Station Zombies aren't listed on the store page, which I've personally never seen before. In the Steam DB page for Next Station Zombies, you can see that the publisher and developer were just removed, and their name was Atomic Fabric. Googling Atomic Fabric returns the CEO's Twitter, which links directly to their Steam publishing portfolio, where you can see games they've made, like The Hidden Ghost for $100, Fire Truck Simulator for $100, or The King's Castle for $200. I'm not sure what makes The King's Castle worth $100 more than The Hidden Ghost, but in total there's 18 games in their portfolio, 11 of them costing over $100. I checked whether it was just a price conversion glitch, but it isn't. There's far more to it that I won't go into as you can see by the CEO's Twitter timeline. So maybe that's for another time. Remember, play War Thunder for free today on PC or console using my link below. And if you're a new player or returning after six months, you can also get yourself a massive limited time bonus pack. And again, thank you so much for War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. Thank you for all your recommendations. If you guys have a game you want to see featured on this channel, then send it to my Twitter. Thanks to everyone who helped out with today's video, and especially the legends I played with.